Hi, in this study vlog I'm going to look at To Kill a Mockingbird chapters 2 to 3 and what we're going to see in these chapters is what it means that Maycomb is an old town in practice, particularly zooming in on the education system. Now um, we get the really comical but also um, quite poignant account of Scout's first day at school with Miss Caroline the teacher and um, what we have in the description of Miss Caroline makes it clear that she's an outsider in Maycomb. Um, she is from North Alabama, from Winston County. Um, and Scout tells us um, that when Alabama succeeded from the Union on the 11th of January 1861, Winston County succeeded from Alabama and every child in Maycomb County knew it. So there's this history from, um, you know, the Civil War era which is, you know, in 1861, this is well before um, Scouts Day and Age in the 1930s. And everyone remembers that um, Winston County succeeded from Alabama. So they um, they went with uh, the North, if you like, instead of going with the Southerners in the Union. Um, and that's something that they won't forgive them for. Um, and it's something that everyone knows. It says uh, North Alabama was full of liquor interests, big mules, steel companies, Republicans, professors and other persons of no background. So it's this kind of um, snobbery of people in Maycomb, of the people from um, North Alabama, you know, are somewhat, you know, corrupted by all of this stuff. Now, it's quite comical that Miss Caroline just has really no idea what Maycomb is like. Um, she has no idea of the poverty, the low levels of literacy, um, or how to deal with children who are mostly working on farms and very practically minded. So she reads them this story about the cats um, and um, it, it's just kind of comical because um, Scout says um, she came to the end of the story and everyone's like wriggling around like worms and she says, oh my, wasn't that nice? In that kind of, ah, oh, she really doesn't know, she doesn't have a clue what she's dealing with here. And then there's the irony that when she discovers that Scout can actually read, which is really unusual um, compared to everyone else in the class, um, she says that um, her father has to stop reading with her and stop teaching her because he doesn't know how to teach. Um, and she says, um, now you tell your father not to teach you any more. It's best to begin reading with a fresh mind. You tell him I'll take over from here and try to undo the damage. So there's the irony that um, in her class, the one person who is more educated than the others and more literate, she kind of holds her back and tells her, you know, she's done it the wrong way. Um, and so not not to keep reading at home, which is bizarre, really. Um, so what's clear is that this school is not really a place of learning anything. In fact, it's a place where the stereotypes um, are just getting underscored um, and perpetuated. Now, um, Jem tries to explain to Scout that apparently there's this new teaching system um, called the Dewey Decimal System. Um, and what Scout says is it basically involves Miss Caroline waving cards at us on which were printed the cat, rat, man and you. No comment seemed to be expected of us and the class received these impressionistic revelations in silence. Um, I was bored, so I began a letter to Dill. Miss Caroline caught me writing and told me to tell my father to stop teaching me. Besides, she said, we don't write in the first grade, we print. You won't learn to write until you're in the third grade. Now, the whole scene culminates in this incident of um, Miss Caroline and misunderstanding the community. And um, when she talks about lunchtime, she expects every child to have um, lunch in a bucket, basically. Um, and she picks on Walter Cunningham, who um, doesn't have any lunch and completely misunderstands his situation. Now, the Cunninghams are from a really poor family and they were hit really hard by the crash, as Scout later says. Um, and so he doesn't have any lunch. And Miss Caroline singles him out in front of the whole class um, and says, tries to give him some money to buy lunch. Miss Caroline went to her desk and opened her purse. Here's a quarter, she said to Walter. Go and eat downtown today. You can pay me back tomorrow. Walter shook his head. No, thank you, ma'am, he drawled softly. Impatience crept into Miss Caroline's voice. 
Here, Walter, come get it. Walter shook his head again. When Walter shook his head a third time, someone whispered, Go on and tell her, Scout. I turned round and saw most of the town people in the entire bus delegation looking at me. I rose graciously on Walter's behalf. Miss Caroline, what is it, Jean Louise? Miss Caroline, he's a Cunningham. I sat back down. Now, the point is that the Cunninghams are so poor that Walter wouldn't have brought a lunch to school at all. Um, but the irony is, is that Scout is then punished for interfering where she's trying to help the teacher to understand better the situation of these pupils. Walter doesn't want to borrow money because he knows he can't pay it back. Um, and actually, there's a sense of integrity behind that, that he's not going to take something that's not his and not give it back to the teacher. What's kind of funny is that in uh, the next chapter, Scout tries to beat Walter up because, according in her mind, he's got her into trouble. Um, but Jem ends up just inviting Walter home with them for lunch. Walter, bless him, because he's so hungry, piles his plate high and then pours molasses over everything, which is like the kind of thick black sugar tar stuff. Um, and Scout is absolutely gobsmacked because obviously she would never be allowed to do this and so her father Jem and Calpurnia are all there and no one's saying anything and Scout doesn't understand the dynamics of what's going on it says Walter poured syrup on his vegetables and meat with a generous hand he probably would have poured it into his milk glass had I not asked what the Sam Hill he was doing Calpurnia requested my presence in the kitchen she was furious and when she was furious Calpurnia's grammar became erratic um basically she gives Scout a lecture there's some folks who don't eat like us she whispered fiercely but you ain't called on to contradict him at the table when they don't that boy's your company and if he wants to eat up the tablecloth you let him you hear he ain't company Cal he's just a cunning um hush your mouth don't matter who they are Anybody sets foot in this house, young company. And don't you let me catch you remarking on their ways like you were so high and mighty. Your folks might be better in the Cunninghams, but it don't count for nothing the way you're disgracing them. If you can't act fit to eat the table, you can just sit here and eat in the kitchen. And so Scout has to realise that because Walter's her guest, she shouldn't be humiliating him by drawing attention to the fact that he's having so much food because he's hungry. Now, I love the incident with the cootie, which is where um, Miss Caroline finds a head louse, um, which the kids informally call a cootie, um, and um, sends uh, Burris home because of it. Um, now, Burris Ewell is from the Ewell family, which is a key family in the novel, because uh, later on, um, there's going to be an accusation of an assault uh, on uh, Mayella Ewell, uh, one of the daughters. Um, but for now, our only encounter is with Burris. Um, now, it describes Burris as the filthiest human I had ever seen. When Miss Caroline's sending him home to get rid of the lice, it's, again, it shows her ignorance of what um, the situation really is in, in this area someone says they come first day every year and then leave the truant lady gets them here because she threats them with the sheriff but she's give up trying to get hold of them so what we've got here is a family in real poverty and they don't come to school either hardly and when burris is, is sent is sent home he refuses to go home and miss caroline says um burris go home if you don't i'll call the principal and then it says he slouched leisurely to the door and then turned and shouted, Report and be damned to you. Ain't no snot no slut of a school teacher ever born can make me do nothing. You ain't making me go nowhere, missus. You just remember that. You ain't making me go nowhere. And he waited until he was sure she was crying. Then he shuffled out of the building. And so it's it's really interesting how um Miss Caroline is brought to tears by the meanness in this boy. Um but also how that's our first real encounter with the Ewell family. And it's quite a sinister encounter where they clearly don't follow any rules. They clearly don't have any respect for authority. And that's going to become really important later on. Now, at the end of this, um, Scout's feeling pretty disillusioned with school and education, as 
might all of us be in that situation but she has a conversation with Atticus that gives a very important lesson that is the theme statement of the novel now a theme statement is basically um, an, in a nutshell what the whole message of the novel is about um, and so Atticus says this if you can learn a simple trick scout you'll get along better with all kinds of folks you never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view until you climb into his skin and walk around in it and so Atticus teaches Scout the lesson of empathy that you need to think about it from Miss Caroline's perspective. She's new here. She doesn't know all these families. She doesn't know uh, the ins and outs of the, the Ewells and the Cunninghams and who has lunch and who doesn't. You need to walk around in her shoes to understand what's happened here. And that lesson that Scout is being, is being taught here by Atticus is a lesson that's going to take her through the entirety of the novel. Um, it's going to take her a long time to learn it. But I think that lesson gives a really important comment on society from Harper Lee because ultimately the problems of prejudice and racism that this novel is going to expose, those problems root from a lack of empathy. And so by um, teaching empathy as the solution, Harper Lee is suggesting that these problems would diminish greatly in our society and in our world today. Hit subscribe if you'd like to follow my vlog for more updates on teaching, reading and studying.